Good morning and welcome to COVID-19 360. We're back with some more updates for you. The case count has increased the highest um, since the inception of COVID-19. 992 new cases have been recorded. And this is like a double or more of the average increase that we've recorded in the last few weeks or so. And there's cause to worry, especially because we've recorded seven more deaths. And so that again is a reminder that, you know, the situation is becoming serious and has always been serious. And so we're admonishing you to continue adhering to the social distancing protocols and also the other safety precautionary measures, including wearing your nose mask, especially when you find yourself in the midst of people where you cannot socially distance yourselves. Make sure that you also continue to wash your hands with soap under running water as many times as possible. Where it's impossible, make sure that you have some hand sanitizer with um, at least 60% alcohol. And it's important that you have that to rub your hands. And, um, you know, just to kill the viruses as well. But if you have nothing to do in town, make sure that you stay home. Tomorrow, well, today, actually, uh, there's a lot to talk about. A few weeks ago, we started a conversation with some students uh, with special needs. I remember that we had some students, um, you know, with visual impairment challenges joining us in the studio to tell us how difficult it has been for them um, to study using e-learning, especially because uh, all the schools in the country had been shut down. And they they mentioned as well that they had to pay for their own learning materials because governments was not making provision for that. I remember that day we had Mr. Joseph Achuhomaji, who is the interim chairman for the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, and he made a promise to provide some learning materials for the students. So we'll be speaking to him. We have quite a number of learning materials for uh, junior high school, three students. And so it includes the Braille edition um, where, you know, students with visual impairments can also study. You clearly will not see anything because this is the Braille edition. And so we'll be speaking to him about that. And also there are some learning materials for students with low vision. And so they have increased the font size. And these are some of the recommendations that he made, um, you know, when we're addressing the issue of, you know, um, difficulty for students with special needs to study. So we'll be speaking to him to find out what he intends to do, uh, looking at the fact that, you know, GNEC has made provision for some of these learning materials. So look forward to it. We'll also be speaking to Vincent Sefoa. He is the PRO for the Ministry of Education. And this is a follow-up from what happened at the Accra Girl Senior High School yesterday. It has been confirmed that six students have tested positive for COVID-19. And aside that, um, we're also being told by the Ghana Health Service that a, a teacher um, and his spouse have also tested positive. So what does this mean? And so does it also mean that moving on, we're likely to see the closure of these schools for final year students? Are we going to see the academic calendar being postponed as well? What really is a decision looking at the media release from the Ghana Health Service? It's a joint statement from the Ghana Education Service and the Ghana Health Service. And if I may read just a bit of it, it says here that... Um, the Ghana Education Service received reports of suspected cases of COVID-19 from some second cycle institutions, including the Accra Girl Senior High School. The Ghana Health Service was subsequently notified of the situation. And as at the 6th of July 2020, six students, a teacher and spouse, have been confirmed as positive for COVID-19 in Accra Girl Senior High School. A team of experts from Ghana Health Service at various levels, led by the national officers and their colleagues from Ghana Education Service, have been to the school to put in the necessary control measures. GS and Ghana Health Service wish to assure all the general uh, public, assure the general public and all parents that in accordance with the lay down protocols of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, that have been issued to all schools, the necessary steps have been taken and the six confirmed students, the teacher and spouse have been taken to a treatment center for further management and are currently doing well. Quite a lengthy statement, but at least um, they also have stated what they intend to do to care the situation. And so be speaking to Vincent to say for to find out what he thinks and the big question however is that so when these students recover when the teacher and his spouse also recover are we going to see them come back to school is it a good idea for them to also join the other students as well what really is the end goal for this and so look forward to this conversation and we'll be speaking to some students from Kumasi who are complaining about an increase in hostel fees as well so all this and more we'll be giving you the case counts for Ghana Africa and the global front so look forward to all this conversation right here on COVID-19 360 again you're welcome 
Welcome back. It's still COVID-19 360. We're jumping into that conversation with Mr. Joseph Achuhomaji. He is the interim chairman for the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition. And like I said, a few weeks ago, we had a conversation in the studio with some students with special needs. We had a student uh, with low vision and we also had a student with visual impairment and also one who could not hear us speak as well. Join us in the studios. And, you know, they complained about the fact that they did not have access to learning materials materials and so it made it very difficult for them to catch up with their other mates whilst the schools had been shut down and they had to rely on radio but even that was not as consistent because it took a while even for uh, government to start the radio channels as well and so for the students with the low vision they could not really see what was being taught on tv because uh, again they did not take into consideration such students so mr joseph achu homaji was here with us that day and he did promise that gnec was working on ensuring that these students with special needs will receive learning materials uh, that suits their needs so they can also catch up with the students. He's joining us via Zoom. And earlier, I showed you uh, uh, some copies of some of the learning materials. So these are uh, books that have been made available for junior high school, three students. So of course, the final year junior high school students. And he also suggested that governments consider uh, having textbooks with large formats for the students with low vision. So this is one of them and also the braille version uh, for students who could not and again you will not see but this is the braille version and so it's perfect for uh, students with visual impairment so Ms. Achu Homaji good morning and thank you for joining us Ms. Achu Homaji can you hear us um, okay so your sound has been muted um, I know there was a gentleman who was helping you out if you can just unmute your sound that's if you can hear me can the gentleman just unmute your sound for us, please? Yes, just unmute the sound. I think you probably tapped on that. And so, like I said, we'll be having a conversation about that. We have uh, books for English lesson. There's social studies. There's mathematics. And so, uh, in the case of mathematics like this, um, you know, so this is something that you can actually look at. So, riddle, riddle, I am a triangle. What do you know about me? write some facts about me and there's a bold uh you know drawing of a triangle as well and so basically this is what uh the mathematics textbook for students with low vision looks like there's also one for science um so let's see so something like this as well is one of them so talking about the canines the dental formula and all of that so at least they would be able to see clearly and read clearly as well. There's integrated signs, English language lessons for junior high school three, braille version of learning for basic school. There's the social studies and mathematics as well. Ms. Achuhomaji, can you hear me now? Yeah, but your sound has been muted. That's the only challenge. Your sound has been muted. Um, let me see if I can unmute you from this point, but... I, I don't, okay, let's see what we can do to ensure that we can hear you as well because it says here that your sound has been muted. Um, if the gentleman is still there because you have not been muted on our machine, it is your phone that has been muted. So please let's fix that quickly and we will speak to Mr. Achuhomaji uh, shortly. But again, like I said, later we'll be speaking to Vincent to say for as well about the situation at the Accra Girls Senior High School. So please don't go anywhere. Forgive us for this technical challenge. We'll be back. And yes, Mr. Achu Homaji will be speaking to us shortly about this particular one. I've gone over uh, the books and he's joining us currently via Zoom to have a conversation about GNEC and the promise they made to provide some textbooks. At the moment, it's only for GHS3 students from what I have seen. We want to find out if uh, they're going to extend it to the other levels as well and how long that will take. Mr. Achu Homaji, good morning. Good morning, madam. How Finally. Are you? I'm good, thank you. And I hope you're doing well. Yeah. I remember you were here a few weeks ago and we talked about the challenges that students with special needs um, were facing. And you did mention that GNEC was going to provide some textbooks. I can just imagine how excited the students will be. But tell me more about this book. Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. Good morning and good morning to your viewers. Yes, um, I was there some time ago at, uh, at your station, mm. and we had the discussion on the e-learning program. Now, we, 
my organization, Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, identified that the, the e learning program GES was running for Ghanaian children. Children with disabilities were not benefiting as such, especially children with visual impairment were not benefiting. Mm. So my organization consulted a donor, that's uh, Usiwa, Usiwa, Usiwa. They, they are the organi donor organization. So they supported it with some funding. Okay. So we use the money to produce these materials in accessible format for children with disabilities and for the deaf. Mm. Uh, children with, uh, with visual impairment and the deaf as well. Okay. So we, we, we bring the books and also enlarge the print for the low vision children. Mm -hmm. so that we can cater for their learning needs so that's what so far we have done as an organization okay and we are grateful to Osiwa for supporting us with funds to produce these materials in accessible format for these children so that the, the educational needs can also be catered for okay so this is what happened all right now i see only junior high school three um level books here are they the only ones who will be benefiting from this no, they are not the only one at all. Even the the, the, the junior high, we are only concentrated for this three now. It's mm. not because the funding we have is very limited. So may I please may I take this opportunity to appeal to all other donors to come to support GNEC mm. so that we can produce more materials for uh, uh, the, the the primary session as well. Because okay. the primary sessions, the primary children are also there. And even the GSS, we have GSS 1 and 2, they're also there in the house. Mm. So if we get more funding, then we can produce more materials for these children okay. so that they can also benefit from the learning uh, learning process uh, uh, during this period of uh, COVID-19. Okay, so, so, so that are, means that the, the funding that you've received was only enough to print for JHS 3 mm. students, right? Yes. How many of these have you printed so far, and how soon? Yeah, these materials we are we are we are producing about five hundred materials. Five hundred materials. materials. So far, we have produced. We are so far we are getting six hundred materials. Okay. But only the trays. Mm. And how soon are they going to get these materials? Will it meet the demand? Next week. Next week, Monday, we are going to present this to Ghana Education Service Special Education Division. Mm -hmm. So next week, Monday. We are presented, then we, we send them to the schools. Okay, okay. Because already the children are in the, they are in the school. Exactly. So, so I was going to ask so, that, you know, yes. they have very limited time. So then yes. we need to pace it yes. so that they can get access to the books. Yeah, so Monday we are meeting, we are presenting it to officially to Ghana Education Service. Okay. Then thereafter Tuesday, they will go to the schools so that the children can read and benefit and, and use it for their exams. So if you present it to the Ghana Education Service, are you handing ownership to them or you will still be in charge of these books and the distribution? No, we, we, we are still in charge. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a partnership. The, the learning content or the material, the content of the curriculum was from Ghana, Ghana Education Service. So mm. it's a partnership. And the donor or the donors are ISOA. They yeah. are supporting us with funding. Mm. Then we partner with Ghana Education Service in terms of the, the content. So we are doing it as a, as a joint venture. So when we finish, and we know the schools are also for Ghana Education Service. Yeah. The children are for them. So we will, we will present it to Ghana Education Service. Then, then we distribute it to the schools for the children to use. Mm. Have you read the Braille yourself? And how significant is it? Uh, talking about how this is going to impact in the lives of these students with special needs. Oh yes, the braille is very important, and and I'm, I'm, because I'm a braille reader myself, mm. and I know my children or the school children will be very very happy with this. So because this shows that they, 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 we are thinking about them, and their needs, their learning needs are also catered for. Had it mm. not been this, then the e-learning pro program going going on, they will not benefit. Because yeah. really they were not benefiting from it. Mm. So they are just sitting down in the house and all that. But thanks be to God that Isua has come to our aid with, with fans. Then GNEC is also uh, uh, playing this advocacy role by way of providing these materials mm -hmm. so that the children can cater for and to enhance their academic work okay. and help them to pass their exams very well. Mm. So it's very, very significant. Okay. Now I'm going to want us to try this. Uh, I know that it takes a lot of training to be able to read the Braille. 
version of books. But if you can just run us through, I have the COVID uh, Braille version here, facts about COVID-19. So if you can just help me through it. I mean, how do you read this? Is it alphabetical? How does it work? Yes, the, we, we have also brought the COVID education uh, 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 ongoing because we also want the children to, to, to benefit from So we have brought the COVID education as well yeah. for the children, for the blind children to read. Okay. So once they read, they will, they, they will internalize the, the, the information and they will comply with the protocols. We, need, we want them to be well informed about the pandemic okay. because this is a killer disease. And they, they, we have to educate them properly by way of giving them the literature on the, decay, on the, on, on the, on the protocols. So mm -hmm. that's why we have bred it so that we give it to them for them to read, okay. to be well informed so that they are not left out of the education as far as the COVID education, uh, for COVID uh, pandemic is concerned. Okay, now I'm just trying to read the Braille with my eyes closed. What I wanted to find out from you is, how is it written? Is it alphabetical or does each word have maybe like, um, you know, a shape? How do you know what you're reading? Because uh, okay. I'm feeling you know, it, the is, but yeah, I'm the not sure. The... Go ahead, please. Yes. Your voice is very faint, so I'm struggling to hear you. I'm sorry. What I'm saying yeah. is, if you can hear me, I'm attempting yes. to read the Braille version of the COVID-19 book. And, you yes. know, I know that they use their fingers to feel, um, you know, the, the dots made in the book. Is it yes. alphabetical or is it more of shapes? How do you know what you're touching? I know it requires a lot of training, but if you can just tell me how the yes. Braille works. Okay. So am you're I touching alphabets? Am I touching, ob um, you know, shapes? I don't know what exactly it is I'm feeling. No, they are all alphabets. Alphabet from A to Z. Oh. All the things you are touching there, you are seeing with your eyes over there, they are all alphabets from A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D up to Z. Oh, but okay. The characters are different from the print. The, okay. The print alphabet. Uh huh. Okay. But the break characters and the positioning, they are different. But the same alphabet, A, B, C, D up to Z. It's mm. the same thing, except that. In our case, we use our fingers as blind uh, a student to read. Mm. I wish I could be in the studio to demonstrate. I know. Our... Yes. I yes. wish you were here because I yes. how many fingers do you use to check the alphabet? Um, Is it both? Some use two fingers. Okay. Others use one finger. Okay. So you yes. run along the the lines and you know try to yes. figure this this honestly is not easy it's difficult you might not see because like i said um some holes have been punched from the back and so it's made the paper a bit rough and those are all alphabets like mr achu homaji said is this going to be free after you present this to the gs because the students did say that they are paying for their own study material so with what gnec is providing is this going to be free for students can you please come again? I'm struggling to hear you. Okay, let me just shift closer to the microphone. I'm asking yes. that, are these learning materials going to be free after you've presented them to the GES and they have also distributed to the schools? Oh, Will yes. they be free? Oh, yes. They're free. It's going to be free. Okay. Because, you see, that's why we are grateful to Usiwa for giving us money mm. or funds to bring these materials uh, and, 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 and in, give them the large print as well. It's okay. going to be free okay. to, to GES, then they will give it to the children. Okay. We, we, as an organization, as a coalition, our objective is to help the vulnerable, is to support the vulnerable mm. children so that they can also come out tomorrow to become responsible citizens of this country. Okay. So we have determined as an organization, as a coalition, so that to bring or to make sure that all Ghanaian children irrespective of their background, their learning needs are catered for. Mm. So it's going to be free of charge, and we are appealing again once more to donors to come to our aid to support the coalition so we can have more money to produce more materials for these vulnerable children so that they are not left out of the education. Their needs are catered for so that they become responsible citizens tomorrow. That is our objective as a coalition, okay. and that we are focused on that one.
All right. Now, finally, before I let you go, you know, with normal text, sometimes when they're producing for the masses, we tend to make some errors here and there, you know, so there's a um, spelling mistake at a point sometimes. Is this something that's very likely with the Braille version? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, we want to thank, thank Genius. Genius has helped us to break these things. And what happens over there is that they do proofreading. Mm. So all mistakes that occur when they were drafting it, the proofreading will make sure that all these things are correct, that the mistakes are corrected. So okay. it's, 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 it all, every mistake over there has been corrected through the proofreading. Okay. So everything there is okay now. It's, it's, right. it's readable, it's understandable, it's everything is okay. All right. I myself, I've, I've read through it mm. and everything is okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Yeah, Joseph. So, uh, before, before, we leave, yeah. before we leave, can I take this? Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank Ghana Education Service for that Ghana Ministry of Education for the partnership mm. uh, for allowing us to use the content of the curriculum to, 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 to produce these materials. We also want to thank uh, uh, our donor, Usiwa, for do, giving, giving us money to produce these materials for these our children, children with disabilities for that matter, mm -hmm. uh, visual impaired. We also want to take this opportunity to thank the management of TV3 for giving us this opportunity to educate the public or to talk to the public about these materials we are producing for these children. We also, very soon, we are going to organize a virtual conference okay. on how to support vulnerable girls in the private areas in terms of this COVID-19 era in order to achieve their educational objectives, we are going to organize this conference. We have determined as a coalition to support vulnerable children in Ghana because that's the objective. So we are inviting all partners, mm. all donors to come to our aid by way of supporting the coalition okay. for that GINEC, so that we can help Ghanaian children, especially right. the vulnerable ones. Thank you very much and have a blessed day. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's Joseph Achuhomaji. He's the interim chairman for GINE, Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition. And they have made available some textbooks for students with special needs. In actual fact, students with low vision as well as uh, students with uh, visual impairments as well. And so the Braille version plus the large text have been released and he says that if people jump on board to support then they'll be able to make this available for students at all levels as well we'll be speaking to vincent to say for shortly about the situation at the accra girl senior high school and also shortly we'll have some students um joining us and we'll be talking about the increase in hostel fees in Kumasi and this is a sharp rise as compared to what they were paying last semester and so this is COVID-19 360 we'll be giving you updates on Ghana's case count as well okay in actual fact you know what let me just tell you what's happening at the moment and as you can see yesterday we recorded our highest case count uh, 90, uh 992 cases were recorded remember yesterday during COVID 19 360 we had recorded a little over 600 cases and even that we complained because that was also uh quite high but now we're nearing the thousand mark and we all know what that means especially for countries that started recording thousand cases in a day we are just eight cases short of recording a thousand cases in a day and those are the new cases that we're recording so that brings our total confirmed cases to 21,077 uh, with 129 deaths and it's because we've recorded uh, seven new deaths five of them from the Ashanti region very heartbreaking a few of them had some underlying ailments including hypertension diabetes and cancer there was also a case where someone did not have any comorbidity. Unfortunately, that person lost his life as well. And so that brings our death toll to 129. Now, recoveries and discharge, we have 16,070. And active cases at the moment is 4,878. Let me enlarge it so we see the case count per region. And as it stands now, again, Greater Accra region is still in the lead with 11,508 cases, with the Ashanti region also following in second place with 4,534. Now, we also have um, 
The Western region with 1,846 cases, Central region at 992 cases. Coincidence, right? Especially because that's the same number that we have recorded in terms of new figures. But all are not from the Central region, by the way. Eastern region now stands at 835 cases. Volta region, 369. Upper East region with 278. Western North, 154. Buno East region, 139. Northern region, 137. OT region, 112. Upper West region, 55. Savannah region, 46. Bono region, 38. Ahafu region with 26. And Northeast region is the only region that has recorded a single digit of eight. And so this is the case count here um, in Ghana in the various regions. Now, let's move uh, to the gender distribution at this point. And again, it is a clear indication that we have uh, more males who have tested positive for the virus. It stands at 57% as against females with 43%. And so this is the case count and gender distribution. We also have the hotspots. If you visit the website, you get all those details as well. We're also getting confirmation that Kolebu uh, has recorded 91 cases amongst its health officials um towards the end of june it was at about 79 and just a few days into july they have recorded a total of 91 cases and that is cause for worry especially because yesterday we had a lengthy conversation with um you know the vice president of the ghana medical association who had also mentioned that 150 of its members had tested positive and four of them had died and so there's a lot that's happening and there's a reason why we're asking you to stay safe if you have nothing to do stay at home but if you had to go out and also join the queue for the voters register they have come up with the queue um, directives where only 150 people are allowed per polling center so you receive your chit and if you don't have that number that makes it possible for you to stay there you'll have to go home just to reduce the crowds at the various polling centers later we'll connect with armstrong at the uh Kragel senior high school to find out what the latest updates on that is this is covid 19 360 we'll be back with more COVID-19 360 and on 3news.com we have indication that Senior Minister Yao Safo Mafo has tested positive for COVID-19 and as a result has begun strict compliance uh, to treatment protocols and this was made known by the Minister of Information Kojo Ponkuma uh, today at the bi-weekly press update and so that's information just coming through. Now also there's a statement that has been released by Ghana Cocoa Board and it says that closure of Cocoa Board and its subsidiaries or divisions uh, head offices for fumigation due to COVID-19. 19. Now it says the management of Ghana Cocoa Board wishes to bring to the attention of the general public that effective Wednesday 8th July 2020 to Friday 10th July 2020 all its head offices, corporate subsidiaries, divisions in Accra will be closed down for fumigation exercise. This has become necessary due to the mass testing the organization is currently undertaking, which has resulted in some staff members testing positive for COVID-19. All necessary arrangements have been made for the affected staff to receive the quarantine and isolation measures wherever application of members, families who have been in contact with uh, such staff. And the fumigation exercise will ensure that the safety of other staff will not be compromised once work resumes on Monday, the 13th of July, 2020. And so that's information that's reaching us as well. And so again, if you just tune in, uh, Senior Minister Yao Osafo Mafo has tested positive for COVID-19. You can get more of such information on 3news.com. Now, we're going to be speaking to some students who have complained uh, about the hike in prices of hostel fees. And they are saying that last semester, there was a certain um, amount they were paying and during this COVID-19 pandemic, where things have become even more difficult, these hostels have decided to increase the fees. And so they are joining us via Zoom and we'll be speaking to them shortly. And we'll also give you some news updates as well. I'm not sure if they're ready and can hear me. And later we'll speak to Vincent as well. And so here it says that hostel prices for 2021 academic year and... Um, Okay, so first of all, cost of reservations per person after making a choice of hostel is 60 Ghana cities. So you students have to pay 60 Ghana cities uh, to make the reservation, after which the prices uh, range from 3,970 Ghana cities. There's 3,570. There's also 3,310, 2,000 and 
910. So I have some of the students joining us. Good morning, Daniel. Daniel, can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. How are you? Daniel, I'm if you fine. can hear yeah, me. Yeah, hello. Okay. So tell me, what's yeah, the situation with the hostels? Tell me about it. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So what is the situation? And if you can make your... Uh, okay. I'm well, very well. All right. If you can just tell me what the problem is with the hostels. What is it? Um, okay, so um, Daniel, carry on. I can hear you. You are live on TV. Daniel. Okay, so um, we have a problem where the 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 price of hostel are being increased. You know, last year we paid some certain amounts, and I think you have to still hold the, you know, the microphone because we can barely hear you. Please bring it back closer to your mouth. And if you can please be quick about it, what is the problem? What's the challenge? Tell us. We are being told to increase those. Okay. Uh, let me try and see if I can um, get another student to speak to us. Uh, Christian. Christian, can you hear me? Hello, Christian. All right, still having challenges. Yes, hello. Yes. Can you tell me what the problem is with the hostel? Okay, your, your voice is actually low, so I can't hear you. Your voice is very low. Okay. Well, let me just cross over to Vincent um, Esefua and speak to him about the challenges with Accra Girls Senior High School. Hello, Vincent. Vincent, hello. hello? Yes. Yes, hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, how are you too? I'm fine, thank you very much. And so I'm very sure that you're very much aware of the statements by the Ghana Health Service in collaboration with the GES, confirming that some six students, a teacher and a spouse, have tested positive for COVID-19. What do you make of this? Well, let me say a very good morning to your cherished viewers. Uh, if you remember the time that we instructed that schools are supposed to be reopened, especially because uh, they were supposed to prepare towards their uh, BEC and WASI respectively. Yeah. The Ghana Education Service outlined a number of uh, protocols that are supposed to be observed by all schools mm -hmm. across the country. And so, uh, by virtue of that, <coughs> uh, it was the anticipation of the Ghana Education Service that uh, these protocols, when observed, may be able to reduce yeah. any infection. Uh, whatsoever in the various schools. Uh, one of the things that um, some section of Ghanaians um, fail to understand is that um, there's a difference between um, avoidance and reduction. Mm -hmm. um, avoidance is when you stay in your room uh, without going anywhere. That you are sure that um, you may not be able to contract the disease. Okay. Um, it is regrettable that we are seeing this in our schools, but um, it is also the responsibility of the Ghana Education Service, especially when we are serving as local parents in all our various um, schools to ensure that the responsibility of guardians are taken over by the Ghana Education Service through the teachers and the headmasters. Mm. And we want to use this platform to assure parents, especially those who have been able to, or those who have besieged some um, senior high schools to um, evacuate their uh, was from those schools that uh, we haven't got into that um, point yet. Um, the Ghana Education Service is still in charge of uh, okay. the safety of, of, of all students across the country, and we are doing that through the efforts of teachers and headmasters okay. in our various schools. But if you are saying uh, we haven't got into that point yet, are we waiting for the positive cases in the various schools to increase before we accept that we are at that point where we'll have to withdraw the students and maybe shut down the schools? We are not we're waiting for that point, and that is how come the collaboration between the Ghana Health Service and the Ghana Education Service is working effectively. Um, as we speak, about 200 um, members of the committee um, have been um, tasked or instructed to go um, around the whole um, country to mm -hmm. ensure that the uh, support efforts that are already existing between the 
institutions and um, nearby uh, health facilities to ensure that in instances when there is a su suspected case where um, the schools actually see that an individual is showing signs of COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, what we initially do is that we isolate them from the general public or from the general um, people or yeah. students in the school so that when we finally confirm that the case is a positive case, then we inform the parents about it and take steps to ensure that um, such students are treated. Okay. And so, as I said, we haven't got into that point yet. Let me assure parents that the Ghana Education Service is still in charge for okay. the safety of um, our children in our various uh, senior high school. We, Vincent. We are also preparing them. We are also preparing them for the impending examination. We hope that they will be able to pass and pass well. But how are they going to pass and pass well when there's panic? We all saw uh, how students at Accra Girls were chanting yesterday. And they all look, of course, very disturbed. And why not? I mean, six students have tested positive. That enough should cause fear and panic. How do you think or envisage that these students will now focus on studying when they are scared of possibly contracting the virus? Well, Bella, we have about 700 senior high schools in the country. And one out of, or if you say even five out of 700, it is at least a significant fraction. Uh, but these are the schools that our cameras could in, capture. In, what in, about in the, the other schools in. that have not been reported yet? I didn't get that question. I'm saying that these schools are the ones our cameras could capture. Uh, these are the schools that we're getting confirmation from. What about those other schools that may also have students testing positive, but that information has well, not come out to the well, public yet? Well, you and I know that we cannot deal with hypotheticals. Mm. Um, what we know, you and I, what we know as we speak, and what the Ghana Education Service has also confirmed to the joint statement from the Ghana Health Service and the Ghana Education Service, is or are cases that we have recorded from Accra girls. Um, mm. The hypotheticals are, are ones that I cannot um, confirm or cannot speak to. But what I can say is that in the scheme of things, if you are having about 700 senior high schools and you have just about 500, five or even two of those schools having those infections, then even in Accra girls senior high school, if you are having about 600 to 2,000 students in that school, and we have confirmed um, six cases uh, which are positive. And um, clearly, it is not a worrisome situation, really, uh, but it's, it's something that the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of uh, so the Ghana Education Service and the Ghana Health Service knows that it's an issue that we have to deal with, and which we are dealing with. As mm -hmm. we speak, I've already told you that those students have, have, have been isolated from the general. Um, students yeah. and they are undergoing treatment and we are managing the situation and we hope that it wouldn't escalate to the point that pessimists, certain people who think that when the issues escalate, mm. then their political fortunes will rely on those things. And we don't okay. think that we we'll get to that for a point. What, what I'm interested in finding out is what happens when these students and the teacher recover? Are we going to have them come back to school um, to mix with the other students as well? Well, uh, as far as um, schools um, has not been closed, even if the responsibility of the students to ensure that they come back to school to come and uh, prepare, that is if and only if the Ghana Health Service and its workers are sure that they have indeed recovered, they okay. have tested negative and they are supposed to continue education. Why not? We had the Minister of uh, Health contracting um, COVID-19, right? Right after um, he recovered, he went back to and the office to go and work. It's a civic responsibility for him. And if you are also going to prepare your examination or prepare for examination and you don't have any um, underlying health issues and issues that will affect your studies, why not? You have to go back to school and go and learn. Okay. You're talking about the insignificance of uh, just one case uh, making it possible for the Ghana Education Service and Ministry of Education to shut down the schools. CSOs have asked uh, for the closure of these schools, for uh, the cancellation of the exams at least, and also for the postponement of the academic year. Now another section is also asking for students to be tested. Are we at that point yet? Well, um, that's a suggestion um, that may be welcomed, um, but and that is the decision for the Ghana Education Service and the GS Council um, to uh, decide. Uh, sometimes even in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and by extension even cabinet because um, in, in, in the situation that we find ourselves, I don't think that 
even the Ghana Education Service alone has the local streaming decide without um, um, cabinet, or if like the presidency also approving to that. So if the CSOs has um, compelling evidence, apart from what we are seeing, uh, which is the position of the Ghana Education Service that we haven't got into that uh, point okay. yet, then um, they may have to also um, align those uh, uh, evidences okay. um, as far as the uh, Ghana Education Service is also concerned, so that we may look at that. Mm. Okay, but but Franklin Kujo had a lot of things to say, and Franklin Kujo, of course, from think tank uh, Imani, and he talked about the fact that, again, could we not have found a way to use the cumulative record uh, to have students graduate to the next level instead of allowing these final year students to go back to school because we are also exposing them to danger clearly because of what we've seen. Well, I've already said that that um, argument has has. has in a non um, It's an argument um, that cannot uh, be tenable. And Why do you say so? It's very hollow. It's very, very, very hollow. It's, it's one that the Ghana Education Service cannot use. Um, Why? We have already indicated that um, uh, most of the times when um, these assessments are being done, uh, there were times that the West African Examination Council were using 30% of the cumulative assessment mm -hmm. um, to create some of um, these students. Um, the West African Examination Council themselves know the weaknesses in some of these um, um, assessments uh, because um, it, it lies within the ambit of the teachers themselves or if like the schools to furnish the West African Examination Council with results or if like marks of students. And at the point in time, you, you knew that there were assemblies that were even supporting some schools to go through um, more practices in examination to ensure that their schools are able to pass so that the locality of, or if like the schools in that particular locality will be able to get that big view of their students passing. Mm -hmm. So if, if these schools were supposed to be given that authority, or if like that room for them to finish the West African examination with, with marks mm -hmm. that are supposed to be used to create these students, I don't think that it would be that kind of um, to engage in that um, assessment. It's, 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 it's not one that the Ghana Education Service can, can, can really use. It's, but it's is, this, is this assessment not a part of the new um, you know, educational policy that we are roping out? And again, the SDG, one of the goals says that quality education for all up to, um, you know, the senior high school levels. And so could we not have taken advantage of the fact that we're not in normal times to enable all these final year GHS students to at least get access to SHS, um, you know, education without necessarily having to write the final exams um, when their health is at stake? Well, you and I may not be able to decide that. Uh, what we know... But you work at the Ministry of Education. Of, I'm asking you... Um, a state, a state, a state institution that is by creation of law that is the Ghana Education Service Council, who is supposed to be determining such instances for us. Um, after considering quite a number of issues, um, it became clear and proper for the Ghana Education Service Council to um, lay down the processes to which we will assess um, our students in this particular year. That is the year 2019-2020 academic year, and they agreed that the position should be that. Um, Ghana will have to elect um, to write the West African Examination Council examination. Right? As we are seeing from uh, the news items from yesterday, quite a number of um, the West African countries um, that were not part of the examination mm. have now elected to be part of it. And so okay. um, Ghana is, is not a country that lives in Otaki. It's a country that, um, uh, I mean, also lives with... Um, a, a, commun a communion of other countries or West African countries um, which have all decided that this time around and um, this is what we are doing. So I don't think that it's, it's a wrong decision or it's a wrong choice from the Ghana Education okay. Council. All right. Do you have any updates on that Crow Westy Girls School? Because we're also getting information that there could be a positive case in that school. Has it reached the table of the Ministry of Education yet? Well, it's the responsibility of the Ghana Health Service and the Ghana Education Service, the joint committee. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to inform or, if you like, announce the general public when there are instances like that. As we speak, um, there, there are no confirmations to that effect. Okay. All right. Now, now, one more thing I want to ask you before you go. Again, um, we want to find out what's the latest updates with the education minister. We did hear that he had, um, he had to go into isolation, um, you know, and so what's the current situation with him? Has he recovered yet? Is he still in isolation? He's 
well. He's fit. He has recovered. He has, he has recovered. Scratch. Okay. He's okay now. Okay, so is he back to work? Um, well, as of yesterday, he was not back to work, but I, what I know is that he was he has been discharged. Okay. What do you make of Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman's selection also as the vice presidential candidate? Uh, you also find yourself probably in the same, um, you know, scope as she worked as well. What do you make of it? Well, I, I am not seeing um, that kind of ticket that will bring hope um, to the youth, especially uh, um, when issues of uh, economics is also uh, very important because at the base of every um, um, economy or at the base of every development of every economy, um, you have to see people who have to be at the realm of affairs managing the economy of this country. Um, we are now going to have a professor of languages to chair the uh, economic management team of this country. What's wrong with that? I don't see, I don't see what um, that person brings to the table. Yes, he's an excellent academic, uh, professor of languages, uh, but if you're looking for somebody to be able to chair the economic management team who will bring that um, prosperity to the youth of this country, I'm not seeing that because if you check the record of the NDC, or if you like the um, John Damani Mahama administration, and in 2016 when they were leaving office, you will see that the economic growth of this country um, has been able to decline or has been declined from about 8.6, 8.7 from 2008 and the left started about 3.7. We were looking for that hope, um, that vision, that focus that the NDC will give us a ticket who will be able to um, let us know that what happened some years back uh, was a mistake and they are bringing somebody on board to be able to correct those mistakes. Uh, but as we see, we have uh, a presidential candidate um, who is not having any basis in economics, who can't manage the economy. Mm -hmm. We also have a hard um, running mate who is also a professor of language. And so, um, clearly it means that uh, if they have the opportunity, the finance minister that they are going to appoint is going to mm. uh, manage the whole country for us. So clearly both of them have shown um, that they are not showing that hope for us uh, as a nation. And I don't think that's a ticket that the Ghanaian people is going to accept. All right. Anyway, thank you so much for speaking to us, Vincent Tsefua. He is the PRO for the Ministry of Education and also has indicated that the education minister is fit. He has recovered and has been discharged. He has not resumed work yet as of yesterday, uh, but we wait to see what happens afterwards. But anyways, let's talk about the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research. Currently, it has a backlog of 13,000 samples to clear after Ghana changed from pool to individual COVID-19 testing now this coupled with inadequate medical uh, supplies pardon me are reasons uh, that results have been delayed so Portia Gabo has more in the following report Some persons who have tested for COVID-19 are yet to get their results and some concerns have been raised about delays in getting their results. At 11.45 at the Noguchi Advanced Research Laboratories and we're here to find out what is actually causing the delays. Ghana deployed the pool testing strategy which involved grouping samples and testing individuals only if the pool sample is positive. This strategy saved time and aided in conserving testing kits. But the strategy has changed to testing individual samples causing delays. The whole uh, month of June, the number of positives uh, far exceeds the number of positives that we had three months before June. June alone. What it means is that we are having more positive cases, so then it will not be very wise for us to do pooling. Since the first week of June, we stopped doing the pooling. Now we do individual samples, so we work on each sample as it comes in. So that will explain why we are having some delays. Currently, the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research receives between 2,000 to 3,000 samples, of which on the average about 500 test positive. All this inside our samples. So before we leave today, by tomorrow morning, all these samples would have been worked on to some stage. They will take them from the original containers that is considered it then process them, they add some chemicals to them, and store them in smaller tubes, label them with the unique IDs that we give to every sample that we have. Then apart from that, the forms that comes with it are entered here. From there, 
they have to go through another process we call the extraction. That is where the challenge is now. We Today, as we speak, we are having some problems with the kit for extraction. So today, the work we are going to do is we are only going to receive these samples and we will not be able to extract. So if we don't extract, then we cannot even go on to do the PCR. So if we can't do the PCR, then we cannot give out the results. So that's where we call the backlog. Laboratory scientists at Noguchi are currently unable to process full results of samples tested due to a number of reasons, including shortage of regions and inadequate consumables. As a result, samples are only worked on up to a stage and stored. This is where we call the backlog. So if the samples move from the room that I took you from and they come here, we keep them here temporarily so that we use the ones here to extract the nucleic acid and go to the PCR room. But once this has not been done, we cannot give out the results. Just as we're about to get to the PCR room, there was a power outage. Actually, what's happening is that we have total uh, blackout. Uh, I don't know the cause, but we have the maintenance unit. We have staff always working with us. So they've gone to the machine room to check. Uh, we are supposed to have a generator that comes on automatically after about 30 seconds when the light goes off. But we have had it for more than 30 seconds, so I think there is a problem. But well, whatever it is, they will sort it out and get back to us. Mm -hmm. Because without the light, we cannot work. After about 10 minutes, the situation was resolved. If the samples that we receive on a daily basis reduce a little, then we can play the backlog. Even though we are churning out results, it's like the outputs and the inputs, they are more or less balancing. We are not having one more than the other. So in the end, we will still have the backlog there. We always push some out, but still we come and add some more to the ones that are waiting. So always there will be backlog. So maybe with time, if possibly we increase the number of machines, increase the number of uh, maybe extraction machines or extractors that we do, then we'll be able to get more samples in, more samples, uh, PCR done for so that at the end we reduce the numbers. Currently, Noguchi is able to keep case based forms in the cabinet while a barcoding system has been adopted to put details of samples taken on an app which will synchronize data. This has led to the reduction of physical forms at the laboratory. And that was a Pasha Gabor report. Now, going back to the students in the Shanti region who are complaining about the hike in hostel fees, I have Clement, uh, Christian Afre, pardon me. Christian, can you hear me now? Yes, please. Okay. So tell me, what's the problem exactly? Mm, we have a situation here where um, um, every coming year, there's an increment in our hostel fees. Okay. And it's very disturbing for us here. Why is it disturbing? What what has changed? How much were you paying um, last semester and how much has been added? Um, my friends and myself um, and a couple of our colleagues here, um, let me say generally, um, it, there can be an increment of about 200, 500 kind of cities per year mm. for the host office. Okay, what institution is this and what hostel is this, if I may ask? Are you willing to put that information out? Please come again. What hostel is this and what institution? Are you ready to put out that information? Hello, Christian. Please. Yes, please. I can hear you. Okay. I asked the question. Did you get it? Please come again. I was asking what hostel is this and which institution is it affiliated to? Okay. So um, currently, it's, it's um, a hostel. It's not actually a hostel. It's like an apartment or something like that. It's an apartment. Uh, it's in KNUST. Okay. It's okay. Um, let me just quickly go to Daniel um, and ask him what he thinks about this as well. Daniel. Yeah. Okay. So now tell me, um, 
you're saying that students have had to make a reservation and pay 60 Ghana cities for it before they pay the hostel fees? Yeah. Okay, tell me more about that. Uh, he says that this hostel is on campus at KNUST. And so has this always been the modus operandi? And if that's the case, uh, yeah. what led yeah. to the increment? So currently we are at home and then uh, most of the students right now, we are not on campus. So to be able to get to be able to get a hostel that means you need to call someone on campus and an agent okay uh well okay. I, I for wish... the increment it's it's just the discretion of the landlord those who are the, the hostel owners so we just need we would want them to help us standardize it and we are in a period of a pandemic most Ghanaian parents are no they don't have a lot of funds on themselves so incrementing, increasing the price of hostels is something that is too much. And we have seen increments in like 500 Ghana cities, 300 Ghana cities, 400 Ghana cities. And this has been going on for years. Mm. I contacted my friends um, yesterday and their hostels, some of them are supposed to increase by 500 Ghana cities. And because of that, they have to move and get a different hostel. And in this time of the pandemic, it's very difficult. And if you need to get an agent to get to your hostel, you need to pay. Okay. How much did you pay last semester and how much are you being asked to pay now? Okay, I don't think you can hear me. Let me go to Confidence. Um, Confidence, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Confidence, yes, can where's, hear you. Your, where's your face? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much were you paying last semester and how much more are you supposed to pay this semester? Last semester, I paid... Uh, 1,800 for two in a room. Uh -huh. And this semester, I'm paying 2,200 wow. for the same room. Okay. But the university has no control over these prices? Um, I don't actually have an idea because the landlords, they increase the, the price at their own discretion. What they feel like putting it on, on, on top of what you paid last year. That's what they do. And you're saying these uh, guest houses or hostels are on campus? Are they on okay. campus? Are they on campus? Okay, they are, they are closed by campus. But you see, it's not run by the university. These yeah. are hostels, private hostels. So uh, that's the issue here. Okay, so you're asking them to reduce it. Um, you know, you want them to take it back to the initial price? Yes, even if like there will be a standardization, as my friend said. Okay. See, like they increase the price anyhow, and sometimes you wouldn't see what what improvement they are bringing that they are increasing the prices because most of us we pay for our own electricity. Mm. It's not like the the hostels pay for it. Wow. So what you are paying? Yeah. You are being asked to pay two thousand two hundred, and that's just to sleep in the hostel. But you are paying for everything else, electricity. And all that? Yes. Wow. Okay. That's quite a lot. Um, well, we've put this message across, and we hope that these particular guest houses, as you call them, uh, will pay heed to your call and do something about it. But thank you so much for speaking to us, gentlemen. Thank you. And these are students from KNUSD. They are not in school yet, uh, but already there's been an increment in um, you know, the hostel fees. And so from 200 to about 500 Ghana cities is what these guest houses situated outside campus are asking for students to pay. It's COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, we're not in normal times. And so parents may have lost their jobs. They may have been furloughed. And as a result, they're not even making enough to be able to cater for their family. Talk less of paying extra for hostel fees as well. So this is definitely cause for worry. And we hope that they would step in and control the situation. Uh, at this point, I think we'll take a break. It's still COVID-19 360, and we'll be back with more. Right, so there were a few people who were sharing their thoughts on whether they should close the schools as a result of what happened at uh, Accra Girls Senior High School and also some other reports across the country. And Emerald says shutting down schools will be the best option now. We don't have to wait till it gets out of hand before action is taken. After all, what will be the importance of the exams if most of the students 
to write test positive and closing down won't be the best their exams matter this is the president's okay i'm not getting your name right okay but paradise says exams no fee by life you bob uh eddie mvp says shutting down schools will be the best available option right now and making them cancel make them cancel the academic year that's from savvy amigo and uh, they should close down the schools. That's by Amos Jr. And Togbi Fianu says that shutting down the schools will be the best option. I don't understand why our president arrived at opening schools whilst developed countries attempted and it failed. GS is one of the... Okay, no, I can't read that on TV. Forgive me. Uh, GAF says that science and data says otherwise. Yes, I think it's the best option. And that is uh, someone called Nikki Samonas. Ba. Okay, it's a no-brainer. That's JL. And uh, the Mind Twister also says, yes, let's shut down the schools. Again... Uh, if you log on to 3news.com, you get the latest information on what's happening across the country. We also have information that Senior Minister Yao Safumafo has tested positive for COVID-19 and is under treatment. And so we'll keep you updated even some more. Make sure that you catch the midday news and subsequent bulletins here on TV3. My name is Bella Mundi and a big thank you to Zuri Azilia for my outfit and to you for watching as well. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Keep watching TV3.